Back to south, back to everything else. Now we're going to introduce slow flight. So again, the area is clear. Slow flight is just what it sounds like. We're going to fly this airplane at the minimum control of airspeed to which any decrease in airspeed, increase in load factor, or increase in angle attack will cause a stop. So we don't want to hear the horn anymore, but we want to be just above the horn. A good airspeed for this airplane is about 55 knots. The entry for this, just like nearly every other maneuver, um, a performance maneuver other than steep turn. So we need to slow the airplane down. Um, for low flight and all of the different stalls, we need to slow the airplane down. We're going to do that exactly the same way that we do when we come into land or any other phase of flight where we need to slow down. It's going to start with the carby, throttle, verify our airspeed, and then start adding our flaps. As we add flaps and slow down, our pitch requirements are going to change. We're going to have to constantly increase our pitch to maintain altitude. The addition of flaps will give us a slight balloon when we add the flaps, and then it will restabilize, so we'll compensate for that. So, here we go. So, car peak comes on, throttle comes back. Anywhere from 1,500 to about 2,000. The more you bring back, the more, the quickly it's going to decelerate. We're below 102, 103, so flap one. Two, three. With full flap, carb heat comes on, and now I'm going to have my power to keep my 55 knots. It's going to take uh, 2,000, 2,200, something around there, depending on the day, to maintain uh, that airspeed and altitude. Now, like in most slow flight regimes, we pitch for airspeed power for altitude. So, um, if we get fast or slow, we're going to use our um, pitch to compensate for that. So if we're fast, we pitch up. If we're slow, we pitch down. However, that's not all we're going to have to do. Obviously, if we adjust our pitch, we're probably going to have to adjust our power as well. So I'm a little fast. So I'm going to pitch up a little bit to prevent the climb. I'm going to bring my power back a little bit. As you can see, I've climbed up a little bit. I didn't bring enough power back, so I bring a little bit more back. Now to climb and or descend while in slow flight, um, it's just like a normal flight. However, to climb, you're almost always going to need full power to climb. And it's not going to climb very much. So if I try and climb here, I'm going to go full power, right rudder, increase my pitch to maintain uh, 55, and we'll try and climb up here. But you'll notice I'm seeing maybe three to 400 feet per minute climb tops. That's why, as a side note, as we're climbing up here, it's so important in a stall or a go-around, if we have full flaps, we must get rid of that, that last notch of flaps. That last notch to 30 degrees of flaps, it does nothing but increase our drag, which makes this thing near impossible uh, to climb. We've climbed up about 200 feet. Now we're going to demonstrate the descent. With the descent, you just bring the power back. The more power you bring back, the, quick, the more quickly we're going to descend. As you can see, with that power reduction, I didn't need to lower the nose to keep my 55 knots. If you're going to bring it past the green arc or much below 2,000, it would be a good idea to put that carb heat back on with this carbureted engine. As we approach our altitude, you always want to uh, plan ahead in these airplanes. So as I approach my altitude, carb heat comes off, power comes right back in, pitch comes back up to keep 55, not, and right rudder to keep myself coordinated. Now we'll demonstrate the turn while in slow flight. The turn, um, it's just like a normal turn. However, the, the controls are going to be much more sluggish and less effective due to the lower airspeed uh, over the control purposes over the aileron. Also, we don't want to bank very much because, as mentioned, with slow flight, the goal is to fly at a speed at which any increase in angle attack or load factor will cause a stall. Um, but as we bank, the more we bank, the more load factor increases and uh, the less vertical component of lift we get. Um, so by over banking, in theory, we should actually stall it. So no more than about 20 degrees of bank, or what I like to keep it out is standard rate from the turn coordinator here. As we turn it slow flight, we'll have to have to bump the power up a little bit, otherwise we will either get too slow and fall, or we will start to descend. So I'll start to turn to the right here, increase just a little bit of power, maybe 50 to 100 RPM again. No more than about standard rate. We're looking at about 15 degrees of bank with that, that's pretty good. And it's going to want to try and potentially overbank on you. And the right turn, those left turning tendencies actually help us a little bit, so it's not as pronounced. But you want to keep an eye on it if you start to climb or descend. Pitch for airspeed, power for altitude. Back on the left turning, now I'll make a turn left back to the south. Same thing, look to clear. Standard rate of turn, just a little bit of power to keep it there. 
Now with the left turn and the left turning tendency, that's going to want to bank a little bit more. So you'll have to find yourself constantly putting in a little bit more white air on to keep that overbanking tendency from, uh, well, you know, overbanking and taking over the airplane here. As we approach back to our heading, we're going to roll those wings level, bring our power back to the power setting that we wanted to or that we have to maintain straight and level flight. That's all there is for a full flight. Now, on a kick ride, they might take this right into a power off style, or they might have you recover. For this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to recover from slow flight because it's nearly the same as every recovery from these similar flight regimes, such as slow flight style go around. So to do that, we're going to load the nose while adding full power. Any time that power goes to full or you're verifying it's full, hand comes over and make sure the car gets up. That's just good, a very good habit to get into with these airplanes. If we have full black, which we do, that first knot needs to come out right after we load the nose and add full power and get one knot to flap out. Then we have to decide, do we need to climb or do we need to just maintain altitude? We're in slow flight, so all we need to do is maintain our altitude, so we need to adjust the pitch as necessary. The faster we go, the more lift these wings produce, so we're going to have to continuously kind of lower our, our nose and get rid of our nose up trim to maintain altitude. So, as that nose comes back to level, full power smoothly, car beats off, one knot to flap out, and then just you know, small corrections to our pitch, keep our 3500 while running up accelerate. We're passing VX, I'll get rid of the second knot to flap. Every time you get rid of a, a knot to flap, that nose is going to want to drop because we're instantly losing lift, so be prepared for that. Now we're approaching RBY, 79, get rid of the final flap. Again, the nose is going to kind of want to drop, so anticipate that, don't let it. And then as we get back to our cruise airspeed, our cruise flight regime, we will run our cruise checklist and do our cruise um, configuration. So anywhere between 85 and 95 in this airplane working pretty good. Bring that throttle back, lean it out as necessary, and trim as necessary. So now we're back to cruise. Remember, no maneuver is complete until you're back into a cruise configuration.